Most people assume the A-10 Warthog is defined solely by its gun. But the true marvel isn't just the weapon or even the plane itself. It's the mission. Launching into the sky, striking enemy positions, returning, rearming, and doing it all repeatedly over and over without pause. During testing, a single A-10 Warthog managed to fly 17 missions in just one day. These relentless sorties weren't random, they were practiced for a reason. The A-10 is the first aircraft in Air Force history specifically designed to support ground troops, a mission called Close Air Support, or CAS. A top-tier CAS aircraft must excel in four areas, maneuverability, hit targets while dodging enemy fire, survivability, withstand hits from small arms or surface to air missiles. Endurance. Loiter over the battlefield for extended periods. Payload. Carry enough weapons to destroy multiple targets per sortie. The Warthog excelled in all four. But here's the twist. Why the engines stay running between missions? Why the GA-8 Gatling doesn't eject casings like other guns? Why pilots sit inside a titanium bathtub? And why enemies sometimes felt relieved at the gun's roar? It's not what you'd expect. When the A-10 debuted, guided munitions were still in their infancy. Hitting targets, especially for CAS, meant flying low and slow right over enemy armor. The plane arrived in 1,970 seconds Europe, when communist nations outnumbered Allied tanks two to one, and the Warthog was built to even those odds. Fortune favored the European allies because the A-10's GAU-8 Gatling was the largest, most precise aircraft-mounted cannon ever built, capable of shredding a tank's armor in a single burst. That roar wasn't just terrifying, it reassured friendly troops that backup had arrived. And for the enemy? Hearing it meant they weren't being targeted, at least not yet. But the Warthog's firepower didn't stop there. It could also carry Imaging Infrared Maverick Missiles, or IIRs. These air-to-surface missiles could detect heat signatures, making them deadly at night or in poor weather conditions. Instead of relying on visible light, the IIR camera translated heat from the target into a video feed on a cockpit screen. Pilots could then lock on and destroy targets with deadly precision, even in complete darkness. Equally astonishing was how quickly the A-10 could repeat missions. During one test, a single Warthog flew 17 sorties in one day. Eight pilots rotated in and out between missions, and despite the grueling schedule, the aircraft only logged three minor maintenance issues, none serious enough to ground it. The A-10's ground turnaround was nothing short of astonishing. Reloading just bombs took under 11 minutes on average. When both refueling and arming were required, the total time stayed below 20 minutes. To shave off every possible second, the engines were left running throughout the process. This clever strategy didn't just save time, it also reduced the risk of engine issues from repeated restarts. Typically, the munition crew would wait for maintenance to finish, then move the aircraft to a loading area. On the A-10, however, two separate munition teams worked alongside maintenance crews directly in the servicing zone, arming the aircraft as it was being checked. At first glance, Trimming 15 minutes per turnaround might seem trivial, but in combat, those minutes were critical. Eight in seconds could fly to the target, strike multiple times, return, reload, and launch again. Multiply that saving across 17 sorties in a single day, and each aircraft gained over four hours of extra mission time, enough for six additional attacks. For troops on the ground, every second counted. Even loading the GAU-8's 800 rounds took less than 16 minutes. Initially done by hand, 
This grueling task became lightning fast with the introduction of a machine nicknamed the Dragon, capable of loading and unloading 1,350 rounds in under 10 minutes. Believe it or not, the GAU-8 doesn't eject its spent casings while firing. The reason isn't to protect the engines or aircraft, it's all about balance. Those empty shells act as ballast, keeping the A-10's center of gravity perfectly stable. If the casings were expelled, the plane's precision and handling could be thrown off. Instead, the shells are cycled back into the gun's rotating drum and stored inside the housing. Only when the A-10 returns to base are the spent casings removed done at the same time the new rounds are loaded. The A-10 is a massive bird, with a wingspan stretching nearly 59 feet. Those broad wings give it the ability to maneuver at low speeds, stay stable in tight turns, and carry up to 16,000 pounds of bombs and rockets. But flying this close to the enemy means the pilot and plane are constantly in harm's way. That's why the Warthog was built to survive hits that would down almost any other aircraft. It could keep flying with one engine, half a tail, one elevator, and even half a wing damaged. The self-sealing fuel tanks prevented leaks, and its landing gear had a clever twist. Part of the wheels remained exposed after retraction. This design meant that if the hydraulics failed or the landing gear was destroyed, the A-10 could perform a belly landing without the aircraft skidding uncontrollably. Even damaged, the Warthog could still touch down safely, turning catastrophe into survival. By leaving parts of the wheels exposed, the A-10 could roll along the runway even during a belly landing, preventing a dangerous skid and reducing damage. That clever design keeps the plane intact, but what about the pilot? Enter the legendary bathtub. The cockpit and essential flight controls are encased in 1,200 pounds of titanium armor, earning its nickname because of its shape. This shield has been proven to withstand direct hits from 23mm cannon rounds and high explosives. Without it, the A-10 wouldn't stand a chance it would be shredded in seconds. As a close air support aircraft, the Warthog often operates from airstrips right near the front lines, sometimes just improvised forward bases with minimal maintenance support. That's why the plane was engineered to be simple to service allowing crews to keep it flying under extreme conditions. And then there's the A-10's iconic look. The nose landing gear isn't centered, it's pushed to the side. Why? The thunderous recoil of the GAU-8 Gatling gun is so powerful it could push the aircraft off course, if not perfectly aligned. To handle that, the gun had to sit right on the center line of the fuselage, forcing the nose gear to make way. It's a perfect example of combat-driven engineering and a reminder of how even the most legendary warbirds like the A-10 are gradually being nudged aside by newer military tech. The A-10 Warthog has officially entered the twilight of its career, and there are two big reasons why. First, modern warfare no longer requires planes to strafe enemy positions with a massive gun. Today, anti-tank jobs can be handled by man-portable systems like the Javelin or by precision-guided munitions that strike accurately from high above. Add to that the rise of armed drones, and the A-10's iconic firepower isn't always necessary. The second reason is even harsher. While the Warthog's titanium armor could shrug off anti-aircraft guns from the 1,970 seconds, it's almost defenseless against today's man pads and advanced surface-to-air missiles. Slow and low-flying aircraft like the A-10 are vulnerable in ways they never were before. Don't get me wrong, the plane is legendary, but even legends have an expiration date.
the U.S. Air Force is fully aware, which is why the A-10 fleet is slated for retirement by 2030, if not sooner. Some of these warbirds have already been sent to the boneyard, where they'll be cannibalized for parts, tested in experiments, or eventually scrapped. The replacements are coming. Two squadrons of F-35, as are scheduled to take over at Moody Air Force Base in Georgia in 2027, while bases like Gowan Field in Idaho will receive F-16 seconds. But let's be honest, when will we ever see another aircraft with that kind of menacing presence? Just look at Indiana Air National Guard's A-10, painted in a black and gray two-tone scheme with the infamous snakehead nose art. She's a beast, and no other plane really intimidates quite like that. But what comes next for the Warthog, and what legacy will it leave behind? The truth is, even though plans are in motion to retire the A-10 fleet by around 2026, instead of the original timeline of 2028-2029, the Air Force continues to commit to modernizing what's left of the Warthogs. The A-10C is receiving upgrades, like high-resolution digital glass cockpit instruments, enhanced UHF divided by VHF communications, integration of small-diameter bombs, and revised ruing work that extends airframe life to 10,000 flight hours. These upgrades aren't cosmetic, they're survival. In contested environments saturated with anti-air threats, electronic warfare, and cyber attack vectors, every second counts. Improvements in avionics and defensive systems mean warthogs can better evade or withstand surface-to-air missiles and maintain situational awareness at night or in bad weather. Reports also show cockpit threat queuing and upgraded targeting pods are being prioritized. Yet the end is visible on the horizon. Political pressures and budget battles push for earlier retirement. The proposed 2026 budget requests the removal of all remaining eight and seconds to reallocate funds toward newer platforms. But what replaces the hog is still contested. While stealth fighters like the F-35 Amperes are often sighted, Many argue they don't match the rugged, low-altitude CAS niche the Warthog fills, especially in terms of durability, loiter time, and cost per sortie. For those on the ground, this isn't just a technical or budget debate, it's a matter of life and death. When the Warthog is gone, ground troops will need that unmistakable gunfire, that assurance from above. And while future CAS platforms might close the gap, none yet replicate the Warthog's ability to soak up damage, stay in the fight with one engine or half a tail, or loiter over a hot zone for hours with a payload large enough to make a difference. So as the Warthog's gun grows quiet, its roar lives on in lessons for future aircraft, in admiration from veterans and civilians alike, and in every CAS mission carried out by those who learned its power firsthand. If you've ever seen that 30mm shell blaze, heard that cannon growl, or witnessed a warthog limping home and still standing, you know, legends don't fade, they evolve. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the A-10 Warthog, don't just watch, let us know what you think. Drop a comment below with your favorite A-10 feature or the craziest fact that blew your mind. Smash that like button, share this video with your friends, and if you haven't already, hit subscribe so you won't miss more epic military tech breakdowns. Your support keeps these stories coming.